and welcome to Geek History Lesson. I'm Ashley Victoria Robinson. And I'm Jason Cop Guy Inman. Welcome to your Mind University because this is Geek History Lesson. And we are the podcast where we take one character from pop culture and we break it down for you in about an hour. And today we got a very sassy, very smart, very sensual lady. Who is that, Ashley? That is one Maggie Sawyer. Who's that? She's a cop, and you may know her from the Supergirl television show that just came back, so we thought this would be the opportune moment to go ahead and talk about Maggie. Yes, because uh, Supergirl season three is right around the corner, and she's a part of it, and she's been a Superman character for quite a while now, so let's break her down. Mm -hmm. Let's hop right into, unless this was suggested by somebody. Uh, no, our listeners are not fabulous mm, enough to have requested Maggie Listeners, Sawyer. listeners. I was surprised, actually. Um, I'm not. I'm not surprised by that. Get out of town. All right. Let's go into the Tencent origin, the first section of our podcast where Ashley is going to give you the Cliff Notes version of Maggie Sawyer. So if you're ever at a science police cocktail <laughs> party, you can, uh, well, you, you know, you can science those guys up and give them some Maggie Sawyer knowledge. So Margaret Ellen Sawyer is a DC Comics character famous for being a supporting Superman and then Batman character, originally created by John Byrne, who first appeared in Superman Volume 2, Number four in April of 1987. So in the realm of DC characters, she's a pretty, she's a pretty young one. Cool. Her team affiliations have been the Gotham City Police Department, the Metropolis Special Crimes Unit, and the Star City Police Department. She was famously played by Floriana Lima on the CW Supergirl, where she is Alex Danvers' fiance. Per the end of uh, season two. Spoilers. And, uh, not, I mean, this show, this I guess. show is like six months old. So, Vince Gilligan said two weeks. Don't tweet me. Uh, so that's the end of your Tense on Origin on Maggie Sawyer. Very cool. All right, <laughs> now we're going to move into the next section of our podcast, The Meet Cute. It's a term that we stole from romantic comedies where we're going to tell you where we first meeted it it and cuted it did the character. Exactly. Ashley, yes, Jason. I have no idea what you're going to say for this answer. So where did you meet Maggie Sawyer? Um, I had known who Maggie Sawyer was for a little while because she was part of the animated universe. She was. Uh, but really where I got to know her is the Gotham Central series. Okay. And that was her big introduction to the Batman universe. She does show up a, a little bit before that. What's the Gotham Central series, just in case somebody doesn't know? Uh, well, we're going to get into that in our lesson. But oh, the okay. Gotham Central series. Hold your horses, <laughs> listeners. Central series is, uh, I mean, it's a long-running series. It's not even a miniseries. Um, by Greg Rucka and Michael Lark. And it focuses like forty issues. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, it's not a it's not a mini. It's no. not like a five issue yeah, yeah. mini uh, that focuses on the the Gotham Central Police Department and what it's like to be in the world of Batman, but not be Batman. And Maggie is one of the leads of that series. It's uh, spoiler awesome. alert: it sucks if you're not Batman in that world. Oh yeah, I was like, are you saying that series sucks? No, I love that series. Yeah, it's but great. <laughs> spoiler alert: it sucks. Yeah, to yeah. Not be Batman in that uh, world. It's it's a good it's a good series. It's pretty brutal. Uh, how about you? As a Superman fan, I'm excited to know where you first met Maggie Sawyer. Uh, there's a little known storyline. Not many people have read it or have heard about it. It's called The Death of Superman. <laughs> uh, you know, it's very obscure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Little little thing. Uh, Maggie Sawyer shows up in that. She, she does. She shows up as a cop, and uh, that's the first time I kind of you know, knew who she was, and she shows up in a lot of 90s Superman comic books here and there mm -hmm. before she moved to uh, Gotham Central. I don't remember ever reading the issue where she left Metropolis, so like, when I read Gotham Central, I was surprised that she was in it, but I get it because she's one of the most famous cop characters in the DC Universe besides James Gordon. Yeah, she also crops up a little bit before that. She crops up in No Man's Land for like a second. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, but yeah, so great. Uh, cool. Shall we move on? Let's go into the History 101. This is the main meta lesson where Ash is going to tell you everything you need to know about old Maggie Sawyer. And you better remember it because at the end of this lesson, we're going to have a police lineup. Yeah. <laughs> and if you cannot pick Maggie Sawyer out of a lineup, well, then you're probably blind. Okay. Well, it'll be, that'd be hard because she looks wildly different on television than she does in the comics. Oh, sure. Because they race bent her. Uh, so we're going to do a little publication history, as we sometimes like to do here on Geek History Lesson, before we dive into the fictional history of Maggie Sawyer. So Maggie was introduced in Superman Volume 2, largely to serve as a replacement for Inspector Henderson, who had previously been Superman's main contact at the Metropolis Police Department. Now, I remember that guy. Jason, I've never heard of Inspector Henderson before, but he was uh, an important staple, yes? Yeah, I mean, not really important. Uh -huh. He was just generally the cop guy. Like, here's the thing. I don't remember that much about him okay. because I just generally remember, oh, it's the guy in the suit. I think he had a fedora. 
That's about it. Yeah, like I literally, I had never heard of yeah. this person. Mm-hmm. Um, it basically meant that right off the bat, she was intended to be a pretty integral character. And for those of you who, like me, or maybe aren't as familiar with Inspector Henderson, Maggie Sawyer was created to basically be the Commissioner Gordon to the modern Superman universe. Good. To be his touchstone with the law enforcement. Great. And she was given the rank of captain when she joined the Metropolis oh, Police Force. she was. Force. I remember because she was Captain Sawyer for quite a long time. She was, and then she gets uh, promoted, and mm-hmm. then maybe not promoted for a little bit, uh, of the Metropolis Special Crimes Unit, which specifically dealt with superhuman threats yep. and menaces the to or caused by Superman. Yep. Yeah, so she effectively led the metahuman task force at the time. Mm-hmm. So if you watch The Flash, a lot of that actually comes out of this period of Superman history. Um, the main difference being that Maggie's team would go out and tackle these threats when and if Superman was unavailable or yep. already uh, occupied with another threat. And this this job really shapes Maggie's view on metahumans for quite a while that then sort of has to be undone, but we'll get to that. All right, so this all happened immediately after Crisis on Infinite Earths, our favorite DC event to talk about. So, Jason, really quick, what is Crisis on Infinite Earths? Basically, the DC universe had been around for about 50-ish years, and they decided no more of these thousands of Earths. So they created a character (laughs) called the Anti-Monitor who basically ate the entire multiverse. They fought him. Bam, bam, bam. Supergirl died. Flash died. And then the whole universe went to white and it came back squeaky clean and all (laughs) brand new with one Earth. Yes. So immediately after that, there was a six-issue Man of Steel miniseries. Love it. And then right after that, Maggie Sawyer is introduced. In the Superman regular series? Yes. Okay. Um, and that, and this served to reboot the status quo for Superman's entire family of books and basically set the standard Superman going forward. Superman was rebooted from the ground zero. Yeah. Like, completely rebooted. Yeah, yeah, And so she shows up in Superman uh, number four. So really early on, she's, a, she's an important part of the new status quo. So now into the fictional character biography, which I know is why everybody showed up with their notebooks today. So... Maggie Sawyer was born and raised in Star City, where she began her career as a police officer. Oh, cool. Star City, home of Green Arrow, very Mm -hmm. famously. Um, And also, in the Supergirl continuity, we do state that Maggie was originally from Nebraska, but that she moved to Starling City and started on the police force there. So that is folded into her Supergirl persona as well. I did not know that. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. I had to do a bit of research to find that Mm -hmm. out. Uh, While she was a member of the SCPD, she married fellow police officer James Sawyer, in spite of the fact that she was actively questioning her own sexuality at the time. And together, they had a daughter named Jamie. Now, Jason, have you ever heard of Maggie Sawyer's secret baby before? No. Because I didn't know that this character existed. And as I was doing my research and I was looking at some of these earlier issues, I was so surprised to figure out that Maggie had wound up married to a man. Because if you uh, haven't guessed or if you didn't know by this part of the podcast, she's a very famous lesbian character. I have... Never heard of this kid. I also didn't know she was married. I thought Sawyer was actually her name. Now, here's the thing. The period you were talking about Mm -hmm. is about eight years before I'll ever read a comic book. I, I, under, so, I understand so. that, but I do know, you are our resident Superman sure, sure. expert I, I've, here I've at not, the Mind University. I've not read all of the burn period. Jason Inman, professor of Superman yeah, sciences. Yeah, I've not, I've not read all of the burn period, really. That's Oh, that's fine. I've I just, read the beginning of it, but not really the, the middle or the end. You're the person I go to for weird Superman facts. Just haven't, no. And, I didn't know uh, that. Here's, it's a there's, secret. Not a, there's not a lot of Maggie Sawyer stories, I'm sorry. Uh, there's not. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's not, but she does do some interesting stuff, including sure. uh, having a secret baby. All right, cool. So not that that long after the birth of her daughter, Maggie came out as a lesbian to her husband. And, uh, you know, James was maybe not as receptive to this new idea as she was. I can imagine. I can't imagine why. Uh, they were quickly divorced, with James gaining full custody over their daughter, Jamie. And it was the divorce that had Maggie seeking employment outside, outside of Star City. And he refused to allow Maggie to visit her daughter or have any contact with her whatsoever, convincing the court that her homosexuality sexuality made her an unfit mother. Um, I thought this was crazy when I read about it, um, but I don't know what it was like in the 80s. So maybe this was not as crazy a storyline as it seems to me. Yeah, this is late 80s. Maybe this could have happened. Yeah, this is 87. So 
Uh, so I don't know. So, you know, instead of sticking around and looking after her Is that daughter, why husband and daughter leave? Is because the courts? Oh, no, they don't leave. Maggie leaves and moves to Metropolis. She oh, takes a job in Metropolis. Fresh start. And never goes back. Okay. And we never see her daughter ever again. Uh, that's probably for the best. Um, so she does go on to fight for her maternal rights in a later storyline. Um, and she wins, but then it doesn't become an important story, but just for anyone who was playing along at home. But the biggest shift for Maggie's personal life is when she moves to Metropolis and joins the Special Crimes Unit. And this is the beginning of her relationship with Toby Raines. Now, Jason, do you know who Toby Raines is? Nope. Toby Raines is another very small super bad character who is a reporter for the Metropolis Star, which is the lead competitor to the Daily Planet because very early in Superman history, it was called the Daily Star. And then they changed it to the Daily Planet and then they wanted to keep both of their names. So they became rivals. And fun fact, Toby Raines does actually appear in Superman the Animated Series, which shocked me completely. Oh, really? I did not know this. In an episode called Apocalypse dot 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 now now yeah uh, with an exclamation point where she is seen consoling Maggie in the hospital after the death of Dan Turpin. Yeah, that's a great episode. Yeah, yeah. But you want to know why it's a great episode? Because Dan Turpin is in it. Because Dan Turpin is in it. Yes, uh, Maggie's great in Superman the Animated Series. This, she is. And this may derail some of your lesson a little bit, and I'm sorry. That's fine. There is a great scene because Dan Turpin dies, and at the funeral of Dan Turpin. Um, they drew in many famous comic creators. So oh, like, I didn't know so that. like Bruce Tim is at the, uh, Paul Dini's there. Uh, Alex Ross is there. There's a couple other, but they like like m- you see the Superman main characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mike Carlin's there. Like all the other people that are at the funeral are like very famous comic creators that had something to do with Dan Turpin. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I like I said I don't remember her being in this episode. I don't remember this particular I, scene. I remember this episode very specifically because I remember the scene where she's in the hospital bed and she tries to get out of the hospital bed and Superman has to stop her and mm-hmm. Lois has to stop her yes. too. I remember that, but I don't remember him. Uh, but I think it's I think it's included that she. I think it's cool. I'm sorry that she was included in this way. He must have just been the dude that just was like no Maggie. No stay. she. Toby's a girl. Oh my bad. I'm sorry. My bad. She, <laughs> Maggie's uh, a lesbian. <laughs> I, I know. I forgot. I forgot. Yeah, yeah, she's just like the, probably the character. That just like sitting beside the bed and they barely reference. She's uh, my apologies from the art. She's a very nondescript uh, white lady with brown hair. Sure. Uh, Toby Raines was Maggie Sawyer's girlfriend for her entire stint at the SCU until cool. uh, Maggie left to go work for Gotham. Although Toby elected to remain in Metropolis and their relationship ended, like happens when someone moves to an entirely new city to take a job. Mm-hmm. Maggie's main focus with the special crimes unit was to prove that the police force was a better way to fight crime than a vigilante approach. In the beginning, she really doesn't like Superman. No, she, she doesn't. doesn't like Batman. Uh, she's very anti the whole vigilante movement. And in her earliest appearance, she's almost always at Superman's side to help him. Uh, While well, at the same time spending a lot of her time at his side trying to apprehend him and reveal his identity to the public. Although her attitude towards him... Uh, does shift when Maggie is saved by Superman a number of times and it becomes more and more difficult for her to continue her campaign against the Man of Steel because when he's that nice to you and you realize that he's actually helping, I guess it's hard to it's hard to hate a guy. Plus, he's got nice hair. Then, By the way, fun fact for Maggie Sawyer. Oh, yes? She is one of the first characters to mention Superman's long hair when he comes back from the dead. His mullet? Yeah, she's like, oh, what's with the haircut? Oh, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember that scene specifically. Oh, really? Yeah, that's yeah. so funny. <laughs> does she does she like it? Do you remember? Um, no, she's just like, because she she uses that because at that time there was four different Supermen at the yes. universe, and so she was thought they were all fake, and so when he shows up, she was like, how, what? How do I know you're you're the real deal? I mean, you got a you got a new haircut. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> I was hoping she was like, get a haircut, hippie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, she doesn't. She's she's fine with it. Cool. Then Lex Luthor became an important part of Maggie's life in Action Comics number 600. Now, Jason, Lex has had a number of different jobs over his long and sordid uh, life. Do you happen to know uh, in the late 80s, early 90s, what Lex's job was at that time? I don't know where the break here because you're you're in a very nebulous period of Lex Luthor's history. Mm-hmm. So he is either the head of LexCorp or... 
he is faking himself as his son, as Alexander, uh, as Lex Luthor Jr. Okay, so uh, he's actually the executive at this point. Okay, okay, so that's so this that because because when the death of Superman happens, which is in ninety two, mm-hmm. that's when he's faking that he is his son in yeah. his own body. Uh, well, that's that's gonna come up. Okay, uh, so he attempted to blackmail Maggie to stop investigating some of his more illicit activities, including his alter ego as Alex. Um, and when she refused to back down, he threatens her with documentation of her sexuality. Mm. Uh, if you go and look at the panels, like if you're really interested in what that means, it's just a file folder with some pictures in it. Okay. Um, and at the time, she was not publicly out, although it was more of an open secret amongst everyone who knows her. Yeah. Um, a, a typical a typical arc, I would say, for characters that go through a coming out storyline. Also, it was at this time that the revelation um, of her so- se- homosexuality could have tainted her career, probably for the same reason why uh, it lost her custody of her daughter. In order to escape Maggie's continued scrutiny and refusal to back down, Luther self-inflicted kryptonite poisoning from his ring, got sick, and then fled the room? And this left Maggie alone in Lex's office with the damning evidence and the moral question of whether or not she was going to take the photos away and remove the threat. Oh, okay, wait, wait, wait. So, okay, so I, you, what you just said was really quite confusing. So um, what you're saying is that because Lex Luthor during the late 80s, he wore a kryptonite ring all the time to keep mm-hmm. the man still at bay. And that's eventually what killed him because yes. it gave him cancer. Yeah. Now, you're saying that during this scene, Lex got sick and ran out of the room. Yes. And oh, it's okay, credited okay. to, he, I don't know how he amplified the kryptonite, but he did it. He was like, oh, here's my kryptonite ring. And like he makes himself sick and he leaves the room. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, just the way you said it was like, what? Uh, it it kind of made it sound like the ring got off his finger and walked away. It's like a touch and go scene. Um, it basically exists so that Maggie can sit alone with this file full and you know go over yeah. the, her ethical questions of am I going to destroy this evidence or am I going to learn to live with this what does she and, do well that's such a great question Jason she decides to leave the file on Luther's desk um, that's a woman with integrity you think so yeah she, she, so she is like she's proud of her choices that mm-hmm. she's just like you know what we'll see We'll yeah. see what happens. Um, and after she does it, she goes back to uh, the MCPD headquarters and tells uh, her close colleague, Dan Turpin, uh, what she's decided to do and that she's going to come out and live publicly. And he says that he's proud of her. Mm-hmm. Um, he's we, like, it's okay, Maggie. Yeah, it's actually a really sweet scene. And we we did talk about Dan Turpin earlier, um, but I also wanted to bring him up again because Dan Turpin is basically a representation of Jack Kirby in yep. the DC Comics universe. Even if you don't know what Jack Kirby looks like, if you Google a picture of Dan Turbin, that's what Jack Kirby looks like. Yep. Now you know. Congratulations. Yep, because he's a Jack Kirby character. He's a fourth world character. Yes, he is. Yep. Which is weird that then he works for the Metropolis Police, but uh, whatever. I mean, a lot of Superman's more involved with the fourth world than any other DC character. So I know, but it's just funny to me that a fourth world character is like, you know what I'm going to do with my life? I'm going to be a cop. Oh, no, he's not a fourth world god. No, I know that. No, no, okay. no. I, I know that. Okay. But I feel I like, like he's just a dude. I know, but I feel like after a lot of characters encounter the fourth world they tend to go on to bigger things and he like yeah. focuses very small um, he's also Maggie's second in command at the special crimes unit they were um, partners for a long time too they were partners yes but specifically there even though she ranks uh, lower than him she is his boss yeah it's because he never wants to take a promotion yes that's true he wants to stay on the beat cop on the street yeah he wants to remain a gumshoe mm-hmm. Uh, When Dan Turbin asks her why she left the evidence behind, Maggie says that she learned from this experience that she's not ashamed of who she is and she will never be again and refuses to let anyone ever use it against her. And I really like this moment because to me it really exemplifies their shared relationship and that it transcends strictly a workplace friendship. This is a trope that, excuse me, DC likes to do a lot and they like to do with their cop characters a lot where, yeah, they're good cops and they're good at their job, but they actually do really care about each other. Um, and it's a it's a nice little moment. Cool. And her friendship with Turpin was originally looked down on by Inspector Henderson, who's the dude who she replaced but still stuck around the precinct for a while, um, because he didn't like seeing a high-ranked officer reporting to a lower-ranked superior officer. Um, I guess that's an acceptable explanation. I think it's a stretch. Um, and at the time, Maggie was only a captain. So in order to reconcile this, he promoted Maggie to inspector, uh, when he became the commissioner during the death of Superman story arc. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was basically, they gave him this weird prejudice, but they didn't want to make him prejudice against her because she was gay or a woman as an excuse to give Maggie a promotion instead of just giving her a promotion for being a great mm-hmm. cop. Yeah, because Turpin's an inspector too. He is an inspector, yes. Uh, during an- It's such an old-timey 
cop. Like, are there? A- I don't think there are actually inspectors in America anymore. I don't think so. I can't speak to the American system, um, but I know in the English system there are uh, inspectors and detective inspectors. Well, I think it's all detectives now. I, I'm telling you what, I'm going to Google it. You continue, Maggie Sawyer, and we're going to have not only a geek history lesson on a fake fictional character on real cop on laws. the real justice system in the United States. Uh, so during and following the death of Superman, Maggie launches a war alongside other Superman allies against Project Cadmus that was led at the time by a character named Paul Westfield. They were particularly mad against um, Cadmus because it had stolen Superman's body for experimentation. And this is eventually what will lead to the creation and birth of uh, Con L. Connor Kent's Superboy. Uh, but, you know, that wasn't, I don't think that was an active development at the time. Maggie then goes on to play a significant role in the Loose Cannon storyline. Jason, have you ever heard of Loose Cannon? Uh, tell, say that to me again, I'm sorry. Maggie then goes on to play a significant role in the Loose Cannon storyline. Okay, is Superman back from the dead or is he still dead? Uh, I believe at this point Superman is back from the dead. Um... It's not a Superman storyline. I don't know the Loose Cannon storyline. That's okay. I'd never heard of it before. Uh, The Loose Cannon storyline is um, part of the DC Comics Bloodlines event. Oh. And it it stars an uh, ex-Metropolis City Police Department officer named Eddie Walker. That's actually pre-Death of Superman. Oh, is it? Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, Which was created by, uh, he was created by Jeff Loeb and Lee Motor. Um, And it has to do with Walker becoming a paraplegic after working for the MCPD and getting infected with the bloodline virus. Uh, Maggie has is said to have had a close friendship with him, particularly after he became injured, and their relationship is further explored in the storyline's flashbacks. This was also the first time that she got a really personal story told outside of the main Superman cool. family title. Although, as you uh, may have surmised, he does go on to be kind of a bad guy. Okay, let's have a real-world geek history lesson here real quick. I'm ready. Um, I'm so ready. I, I looked it up. Uh, Inspector is a... Rank used in the United States by a municipal police department and can be analogous, analogous, excuse me, to detective or junior administration officer. So it does exist in American cops. I just don't hear it on cop movies. Now, specifically, the New York City Police Department, the rank of inspector is two grades above captain. Ah. So it is, I apologies, I just... Inspector always sounds like an old timey term to me, and it, I, it sounds like it's a very Sherlock. Term. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and when you watch cop shows and stuff like that, you just hear detective, I, you, or lieutenant, or lieutenant, mm-hmm. or captain, or sarge. I, I just you don't hear inspector anymore. So yeah. I thought it was long gone. All right, cool. There, you, the more you know. So uh, uh, sorry to everyone who was yelling at their iPhones. Sorry to all the uh, police officers that listen to this podcast. Uh, if you're a police officer who listens to this podcast, please tweet us at GHL Podcast because I'm curious. Stay safe. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> uh, Maggie then went on to lead the Metropolis S. CU four issue miniseries in 1994. I remember that book. Uh, by Cindy Goff and art by Peter Krause, interestingly enough. It features pretty much what would you expect? Uh, you know, Maggie's doing cop stuff and uh, having a girlfriend. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, Jason, the description of this series uh, it sounds pretty simple, right? And it's a formula that we've seen a lot in a lot of comic book characters and in a lot of cop characters, the work-life balance. Do you think that it needs to be anything more complicated than a personal story? Or is this the kind of storytelling that maybe comic books should return to? What do you mean more complicated than a personal story? Well, this miniseries um, is really just like she's her job is a cop. So she's a cop and then she okay. comes home and deals with her girlfriend. There's nothing really extraneous or really superhero-y about it. I mean, you don't need that. You're telling a story about a cop. Mm-hmm. But uh-huh. we have characters, um, particularly when you get to Gotham, who are often dealing with, even in Gotham Central, um, who are dealing with stuff that's a little more large scale or crazier, you know? Um, I mean, here and there in Gotham Central, but there are still the small stories in Gotham Central. Mm-hmm. And Maggie is in that story. That's true. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you I know. guess I'm thinking of that first arc with Mr. Freeze. Well, see, there's, there's many arcs in there where it's simply like, I mean, there's one arc in there where they think it's a villain, but they it finds out it's just a dude. Yes, yeah, you yeah. You know, um, there's a lot of, like, low-scale stuff in there. No, it's, it, you're, if you're making a story about a cop in a superhero world, then it needs to be about a cop. hmm So, no. Cool. The most important thing about that particular miniseries, the SCU miniseries, is the fact that it was awarded the Outstanding Comic Strip Glad Media Award in March of 1996. Cool. And the award was given based on the fact that the miniseries was the first by a major comic book publisher, which pretty much just includes Marvel and DC Comics, sorry, Image, uh, to feature a protagonist lead who was an out lesbian. 
Uh, so that's pretty cool. So well done, Maggie Sawyer. Uh, then her next and DC. Well, and yeah, I mean, I guess DC played a a teensy tiny I little mean, they baby only, they part. Only pub- they only published the book. They only yeah, published and commissioned it and paid everyone to make it. So uh, good job, DC. My hat is off to you. Her next major appearance was in the Batman series No Man's Land that began in 1999. It's quite a time jump there. <laughs> well, she's around, yeah. but she's really just. Well, it's it's a it's a three year oh, jump. Oh, um, but oh, she's I really know. just background level cop. So sorry. Uh, but Jason, real quick, uh, what's No Man's Land? No Man's Land is after the giant cataclysm earthquake of Gotham, and Gotham crumbled and needed billions of dollars of repairs. The United States government said, "Ah, screw that!" Blew up all the bridges, left everybody inside Gotham, and let it become a post-apocalyptic wasteland. Yes, uh, and each of the supervillains of Gotham divide up their own territories, and they had g- turf and gang wars for a year. Yes, so Maggie is a pretty minor character here, um, and she is fully a support player working behind James Gordon's faction I in forgot Gotham. That she was in No Man's Land. She gets a lot more face time than she gets anything to do or any lines, mm. um, but. This is the beginning of where her character picks up some controversy because in many ways she upends her life again and abandons everything again that she'd been building in Metropolis in order to go to the cooler city in the DC Comics universe with the scarier superhero. Um, For example, Toby Raines, her girlfriend who works for the Metropolis star, she stays behind in Metropolis so their relationship quickly becomes strained and they eventually break up. But this leads me to maybe my biggest question about Maggie Sawyer that I want to run by you, Jason. Okay, sure. Do you think that Maggie belongs in Metropolis or does she belong in Gotham? And this is the controversy that I was talking about because when people talk about Maggie Sawyer, this is often what they argue about. Um, I mean, do we want to say that to the end of the podcast we where, can, where we talk about if, some of our if, Gotham stuff? If you would like to. Yeah, I think let's let's let the listeners hear some more about Gotham and, and let's move that question to the end. All right. Then let's uh, move right along. So copy and paste that at the end of your notes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so in the mid uh, the mid aughts, the mid two thousands, Maggie transferred formally to the Gotham City Police Department full time to head up the major crimes unit based on her experience as the head of the special crimes unit in the MCPD. Now Ashley. Now Jason. I have a question for you in your own lesson. Yes. Do you know what the major crimes unit of Gotham is? Oh, we'll get to that. Oh, are you going to explain it? Yeah. (laughs) Now, also at this time, are you going to talk about what Commissioner Gordon is up to? I'm not, but you can. He's retired. (laughs) Yes, there he is. Because he got shot. (laughs) Yeah. So there's no Commissioner Gordon. There is no Commissioner Gordon. It's a commissioner. Uh, uh, We'll talk about him because uh, he's he's going to become an important part here in a Mm -hmm. couple minutes. He's an idiot. He's not great. Uh, yeah, because when Maggie first shows up in um, in No Man's Land, she's there as basically like disaster relief. Mm-hmm. And then so it's after that and after Gotham is saved that they ask her to stay on yeah. full time. Um, and because James Gordon is sort of taken off the table, we do get a lot of restructuring of what we've known to be the Gotham City Police Department for the last, I don't oh, yeah. know, 50 years at that point. We get a lot of new detectives and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. which is which is cool, yeah. I think. I think so. The meta narrative reason for this too is also because uh, DC Comics wanted her to be one of the leads of Gotham Central, which comes right out of this next. Uh, like I mentioned, written by Greg Rucka and Michael Lark. And fun fact: if you like that creative team, you should check out their Image Comics series Lazarus, that also has a female lead. Uh, yeah, Lazarus is cool. So we talked a little There's bit. There's another writer on that too, and I can't remember. I'll, I'm gonna look it up. Uh, yes, but Greg Rucka is the one who starts it. Um, So like we said at the top of the lesson, Gotham Central is the series that focuses on the Gotham City Police Department and the difficult... Ed Brubaker, excuse me. Oh, Jesus. How did I forget that? It's co-written by Ed Brubaker and and, uh, Greg Rucka. May I call I'm so sorry, Mr. Brubaker. Michael Lark is the main artist. The primary artist, yes. um, Because they did this... I'm sorry to interrupt your lesson again. No, please. Because what they did is they traded off. Like, um, I can't remember... Let me look at the uh, Wikipedia here. But one of them wrote the day shift, and one of them wrote oh, the that's night shift, right. and the arc changed uh, for each one. Um, and then eventually, I believe they traded off volume by volume, yeah, or something like that. Rucka, Rucka did day shift. Brubaker did night shift, and then eventually Brubaker left uh, to go to Captain America, and um, and Greg Rucka stayed, and mm-hmm. he finished out the series. Yes. Sorry, I just want. I, I, no, that's okay. I knew there was two big writers on it, and I was like, I know it's more than Greg Rucka. I couldn't remember. His but Rucka's the one who writes most of Maggie's stuff. He does. 
Um, Because Maggie's a day shift. Yes, she is. Uh, This is also the series that outs Renee Montoya as a lesbian and brings her closer to Maggie, but only in the narrative sense. They actually never date. I always Maggie doesn't like Renee. I know, but I, yeah. I always think that they dated just because they're like the nope. two lesbians on the force. But Maggie does not like Renee. They do have a complicated relationship and they do share a lot of scenes together. But yeah, um, Renee's kind of a mess um, and an alcoholic at this point. Can time. I talk a little bit about Renee here for a second? Sure. And if you like this, you can always go and request a Renee Montoya lesson. Sure. There's an interesting thing to note about Renee Montoya is that um, she was partnered up when she was a rookie cop. She was partnered up with Harvey Bullock. Yes, another notorious drunk. Yep, a drunk and a very donut eating guy, very famous uh, Batman character. He's in the animated series. He's all throughout the 80s of Batman comic yeah, books. Renee also in the animated series. Uh, Renee was created on the animated I didn't series. I know that. Yep, that's her first appearance. She's a beat cop. Mm. Um, and then she gets absorbed by the comic books. But it's interesting to note that Renee just became Harvey Bullock. Yes. Absolutely. You know. Uh, just in Sorry, a, I just wanted to bring that just up. Just in a slimmer form. Back to Maggie Sawyer. Uh, this is also the series that introduces Stacy. Do you know who Stacy is, Jason? Maybe? She's the civilian GCPD intern yes, who is the yes. only person allowed to turn on the bat signal because GCPD officers are not legally allowed to have any formal working relationships with Batman. She's a cute redhead with glasses. We've talked about her forever and never looked up her name, and I finally found it, and I was so proud yeah. to be able to include there's it in an this issue, lesson. There's an issue all about her where it's like her dream where she dreams that she turns on the back signal just to kiss Batman. Yes. Um, I also There's also a very famous panel. I can't remember what exact arc it's from, but where Robin is watching her turn yeah. on the bat signal. It's really cool. It's like behind Tim's head. Uh, so Harvey Bullock also makes sporadic but important appearances throughout this series that moved along the rehabilitation that his character was undergoing at this time and reestablishing him as a good police officer and not just a punchline. He does lose his job towards the middle of this series, but Maggie becomes integral in bringing him back to the force. Then Infinite Crisis happens. Jason, uh, what's Infinite Crisis? Basically, the Superman of the Golden Age, the Superboy of Earth Prime, and Alexander Luther, who I believe is from Earth 3. I think so. They're left over from the original Crisis on Infinite Earths that we talked about at the beginning of this episode. Mm-hmm. They're, they don't like it. They mm-hmm. don't like that they're in a pocket dimension. Mm-hmm. So you know what they do? They punch holes in reality. How is that possible? It's comics, kids. And they come to our <laughs> our world and they punch things so much and break reality so much that suddenly where there was one Earth, there is now 52 Earths and a multiverse again. So we've spent now years going over what these crises are. This is my favorite explanation of Infinite Crisis. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Um, You're just going to punch stuff until reality yeah, changes? Yeah, I'm going to steal right. that. Uh, the way we <laughs> often talk about Infinite Crisis farting out at one universe. Um, immediately following Infinite Crisis is the one year later storyline, um, which was basically... Covered in 52. Yeah, oh, we're going to talk about 52. Mm-hmm. She's in it. Yes, she is. Mm-hmm. Um... And it for the GCPD officers, it picks up immediately after Harvey Bullock discovers that there's all this corruption within the GCPD and that it went all the way up to the top of the line of the commissioner at the time, whose name is Michael Akins. Commissioner Akins. Oh, Commissioner Akins, yeah. And he's the, he's uh, the commissioner during war games. That's he's terrible. He's the crummy commissioner who Jason yep. uh, brought up earlier. This move allows him to return back to the force and move past the humiliation that he had suffered. It returns James Gordon to the role of commissioner. Yep. And I wanted to bring this storyline up, even though Maggie's not necessarily integral to it, because I feel like it's something that when Maggie's story was first introduced in the Superman series of books, she should have been heavily involved in. Like, she's very anti-corruption. She's all about the, the power of the police force to do good and I think it's it's sort of strange that she's not really a big part of this besides the fact that she is one of the only GCPD officers to not be touched by this internal corruption. She remains one of the good cops uh-huh. but I just I guess I wish that Bullock would have paired with her a little bit more because this really seems like her cup of tea. So although this is the first time um, that she oh oh and following this she uh, is demoted to the role of captain. Because yeah. every like everyone who was who was at the GCPD who wasn't fired basically got a demotion to be like you let this go on and didn't stop it but you weren't part of it so you can stay but you don't get she's not an inspector it, it, anymore it also could I think they just wanted to call her Captain Sawyer again. Uh, yes they wanted to call her <laughs> but it, you could also like especially in cops like in the military stuff like mm-hmm. that is 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 you can't get promotions or move on unless there's a slot available for you I know but they demoted her well but I'm saying <laughs> is that maybe it was a thing where they're like look if you want to stay in Gotham which she does she stays in Gotham for several more years she does yes um it could be like well you can stay but you we only have a captain slot for you. 
Oh, that'd be interesting. You know what? Uh, I, I, if that were the case, I wish, I wish it would have been met, it, written in the text. Yeah. Um, because that's a powerful idea that she, because she does stay, mm-hmm. um, but that she chose to stay despite yep. the fact that she gets a demotion. Mm-hmm. Um, but she's not the only one, so don't feel too, too bad for Miss Maggie. Uh, her next major appearance is in Jason's beloved 52 series. So good. Jason, really quick, what's 52? 52 is one of the greatest comic books that DC has ever published. Yeah, but what happens in it? You don't need to know anything else. <laughs> Uh, you would no, not but, let me get away with something like that, uh, mister. <laughs> fair point, so I'll keep going. Um, so um, 52 is a weekly DC comic book series to cover that one year later that you talked about mm. where each issue covers a week of a year. Mm-hmm. Um, it is one of the, I would say it's one of the best character pieces that DC has ever done on their superheroes. It is so flipping I, I mean i think it is my favorite dc superhero comic book of all time there you go so during week three maggie discovers the body of alexander luther and is forced to call steel in in order to identify the body lex luther then swoops in and throws a press conference where he announces that in the wake of alex's death that alex was the one responsible for all of the shady happenings that have been going on at LexCorp. and maggie finds this suspicious as she should now this is very important for lex luther because um in Tell the me why. <laughs> it, well, in the one year uh, one year later storyline, Lex is back in front of in charge of his business, mm-hmm. and he's cleared of all crimes. Now, before that, he was basically criminal guy, whatever. So Lex spends most of fifty two and a, a ch- good chunk of fifty two because remember I told you about Alexander Luther who was left over from Earth three. He's the yes. guy that caused yes. Infinite Crisis. Um, so Lex takes his body. And it's like, hey, we got the same DNA. Evil doppelganger yeah. did all that weird stuff, <laughs> yeah. even though part of it was him. Yeah. If you uh, if you remember from our Lex Luthor episodes for a long, long time yeah. ago, Lex loves his doppelgangers. Yeah. So Lex like basically blamed every single bad thing that Lex Luthor had ever done on this doppelganger. On this dead body. And cleared his entire slate and was able to take control of his company because of that. Yes. A uh, fun fact, during the same arc, she mentions Toby Raines for the first time post-Metropolis in a conversation with now former detective Renee Montoya. Uh, Renee became a drunk and got fired from the police force. Mm. Maggie next pops up in week 12, where she angrily confronts Montoya for busting up a cover for Intergang and closing all the leads that the GCPD had to taking them down. Then we're going to move into the era of Batwoman. <sighs> Cheers in the crowd. In Detective Comics, this is a great story. Uh, in Detective Comics number 856, published in October of 2009 by Greg Rocca, remember him, and J.H. Williams III, we meet Kate Kane at a charity ball. And she and Maggie share a dance. And while they are dancing, Maggie asks Kate for her phone number and states again that she and Toby Rain are no longer an item. So don't worry, we can date. Now, I think... And I might be wrong about this, but I believe the scene you are talking about is actually a flashback. It is, and it's and it's a flashback of like when Maggie first arrived in Gotham, right? Yeah, yeah. just right before we're, No we're, Man's we're Land. We're gonna, we're yeah, gonna, yeah. we're gonna get to that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but this is if you were reading the comics chronologically, the uh, or if you're putting yeah. the story together chronologically, this was when she popped up. Following this, she remained a supporting character in the Rucka and Williams 2011 Batwoman series, which, uh, in my opinion, is the best Batwoman series uh, that has ever been. So check it out. Uh, there's a little retcon, uh, like Jason brought up, of Maggie's Gotham. Them origins that states that uh, Maggie and Kate, when they first met, Maggie was still working with the MCPD and she'd come to Gotham to provide disaster relief after a particularly devastating hurricane that is supposed to have happened right before the earthquake, I guess. They then meet and share a poignant glance at the GCPD precinct headquarters, and then they see each other again at this ball where they dance around together. And then she and Kate begin dating pretty quickly um, after the start of this Batwoman series. But Kate's vigilante activities as Batman, uh, Batman, Batwoman, excuse me, and her harsh beliefs and dedication to her crusade start to complicate things pretty much right away. Maggie actually learns about Kate's secret identity pretty pretty speedily for a typical superhero story, with Kate revealing her Batwoman alter ego and proposing to Maggie in her full costume in Batwoman number 17 from February of 2013. Fun fact, this issue was published the week after Valentine's Day. Hey, that's cool. And I, I, I'm going to hazard that that was not an accident. 
So Maggie stayed in Gotham for quite a while after that, several years in publication history, although who knows how long anything lasts in the comics continuity. Days. Uh, possibly hours. Who knows? Uh, and she remains the head of the major crimes unit while James Gordon, when he returns, kind of mm-hmm. heads up. Homicide. He does. He mm-hmm. does. And uh, he eventually becomes commissioner again, and then he becomes Batman. And mm-hmm. it's really, really crazy. Mm-hmm. We ignore all that. We do. <laughs> especially <laughs> especially for the sake of this lesson. Yeah. Um, but, but as you might have surmised, Maggie and Kate do not stay together and they do not get mm. married very tragically. The last time we actually saw Maggie Sawyer is in DC Rebirth, which is what, Jason? Uh, it's kind of the refreshing of the DC universe. It's not, it's not really a major event at all. No, really. uh, but it's it's the rebranding that yep. we are under mm-hmm. at the time of this recording. Um, and it is stated there that at an unspecified time for unspecified reasons, Maggie Sawyer has returned to her home in Metropolis. Yeah, and the how and the why, who knows? I'm I'm hoping that we get to that. Pretty soon. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah. So now I want to talk really, really quickly about another series that she's involved in that's outside of the main DC Comics continuity that is the DC Bombshells Digital First series. She's in Bombshells? She is in Bombshells. Why haven't they made a statue of her? Uh, that's a great question. Because, you know why? Because she doesn't have... The name power. very beautiful in it, but she, she's not as sexy as some of the other oh, Bombshells. come on. She's so sexy. Uh, I mean, I don't know. All right, so tell me about Maggie. I'm excited about this. I didn't know about this. Yeah, so I actually read all of Bombshells right before, uh, while I was doing this lesson, um, and it was really fun. So in the very first issues of Bombshells, Maggie and Kate opened the series, and Maggie leads- Are they together? They are together. Okay. Maggie leads a squad of GCPD officers to pick up the criminals that Batwoman puts down, because Kate Kane- um, is a professional baseball player for the Gotham <laughs> City Knights. Oh, so she's a bat boy. Like she has bat yeah, ears on her hat woman. and she has a bat, which I was like, oh, that's a, I didn't think about it before that, but I was like, that's a really good joke. All right, I see you. So she goes out at night. The women play baseball in domino masks because the men just can't handle that they're women. So she just like is legit like in the Batwoman costume the whole time. All right. And then she goes out at night and like beats the snot out of these rude guys. And then Maggie will roll up with her squad and they'll pick them all up and take them to jail because in the Gotham City, and they do live in Burnside, where this is set, almost all of the men over 18 are gone off to the Second World War because this takes place during the 1940s. Um, her a league of their own. It is very that. Mm-hmm. Um, also on the on the Gotham Knights rival team, Betty Kane, who was the original Batgirl, uh, cool. is the captain of their team, and she is Kate's cousin, which I think is really, really cute. Uh, Maggie and Kate do live together. You do see them being... V- the most intimate I've ever seen, including the Rucka series, the digital series. Um, we can get, we can do anything we want. It's it's not like um nobody's naked in it or anything, but like you see them sleeping in bed together. You it's see like Showtime them, after dark. You see them kissing. It's it's they're <laughs> so cute. To, like it makes me really happy just because I really like them as a couple. And they do work together in tandem as vigilante and police officer, which is sort of ironic given the fact that... Is she still Captain Sawyer in this, too? Yep. Cool. Uh, It's just ironic given the fact that when she started in Superman, she hated vigilantes. And they are pretty quickly recruited by Amanda Waller to join her bombshell squad to end the (laughs) Second World War. Kate goes overseas to head up the active operations, and Maggie stays behind in Gotham to keep things under control on the home front. So she is like kind of a Rosie the Riveter of, of Bombshell's universe. Cool. Um, she doesn't appear in it as much as Kate because, like I said, she is still at home hero. in Gotham. She's she's not. She's a police officer. Um, but if you really like Maggie Sawyer, this is a really— And how can you not? I don't know. Uh, she's so awesome. You could be a jerk. Um, but if you really like her, this is a great series. And I did want to mention it because Maggie doesn't crop up in a lot of places. And this is a great, a really great incarnation of her that's coming out right now. So that is the end of your Maggie Sawyer lesson. Woo. Why don't we slide right into the discussion? That was a fun lesson. We Thanks. went in a lot of different avenues. I had a lot of fun researching it, <laughs> actually. Uh, so why don't we slide right into home base and talk about uh, Metropolis v. Gotham per Maggie Sawyer. Oh, okay. This is the discussion? Or yeah. Are we, we going to say that for after we're recommended reading? Oh, my bad. Let's do recommended reading first, sure. like we always do. <laughs> yeah. It's not like we've done more episodes than oh, this Jesus. podcast or not. Uh, Jason, it's what's right. recommended reading? Because okay. clearly I've, I'm off my rocker today. you got to make the listeners wait. Uh, uh, uh. All right. So recommended <laughs> reading, of course, is where we give you our recommendations for stories that you want to read in case you want to read Maggie Sawyer. And you can find our entire list of every book we've ever suggested, geekhistorylesson.com slash recommended reading. You go there, you find the book, you click on it, it takes you right to Amazon. 
Amazon, and you can enjoy the book and understand a little bit more about these characters. Plus, you help out the podcast. Yes. So I am going to recommend Superman. Of it, It's volume two, number one. It's the first volume of Superman post-crisis on Infinite Earth that introduces Maggie Sawyer. This I is- believe that trade is called Superman, the Man of Steel, Volume two, I believe it is because, because it volume has, one is only the miniseries. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I knew it had some. It but had like Superman. They're slash all Superman. well, yeah. They're all called Superman: The Man of Steel because there's like ten volumes. Of yes, them. and you're right. The first volume is the miniseries. So I pick up volume two where Maggie is first introduced. You get a really good sense of who she is. The art is still really John tremendous. Byrne. It's in John it. Byrne. It is, yeah, it is like the height of everything good about John Byrne Superman, and you get to see Maggie in her in her infancy as far as publication. Your first appearance, goes. yeah. Then I would also recommend picking up Gotham Central. Because it's amazing. Yep. Start at volume one and then read forward for the next nine 40, or so volumes. It's 40 issues. I yeah. don't know how many volumes there are. Uh, There's not a giant omnibus there. But, but they you have, can get they the have nice little soft covers that are like 10 issues each. Um, and then uh, Batwoman volume one, the Rucka and Williams series, because she's a really important part of this. And the art is unlike anything you will ever see. I would really recommend picking that up. So cool. there you go. And you can get all of those at geekhistorylesson.com. Now it's time for the discussion. Oh, I've been trying to launch this three times now. Three right. false stuff. We, 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 have been, we have been putting this off and putting this off. <laughs> And putting this off. What is the question the listeners now want us to answer? <laughs> They're <laughs> demanding. They are screaming at us, Ashley. Screaming at their iPhones. Every time we keep delaying it, they are just going mad with, why aren't you answering this question? Why? Why aren't we answering this question? And that's the question I have for you, right? Why aren't we answering this question, Ashley? Because uh, you keep putting it off. Exactly. We keep putting it off. The listeners are going ballistic right now. They have no idea when we're ever going to answer this question. We might not answer this question, but they need to know, Ashley. I want to see how long you're going to keep delaying and keep talking. Well, the delays <laughs> are what they're getting mad about. And eventually they're going to unsubscribe because they need to know whether Maggie Sawyer deserves to be in Gotham or Metropolis and what is better for her character. That's right, Jason. So as our resident Superman expert, I bet you have feelings about this. I would love to know what they are. I actually want to flip this to you. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you like this? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, no, I, I, I actually because you have less of a history with Maggie Sawyer. I do, yeah. And you're, I, th- I would say a lot of your exposure to Maggie Sawyer has been the animated series, has been the show, mm-hmm. and now this mm-hmm. lesson. Mm-hmm. From what you've learned, what's your choice? I'm, I'm actually very curious about your choice because I bet people could predict my choice pretty easily. It's an interesting question for me because I've pretty much exclusively uh, experienced her as a Gotham City Police Got member. Um, I do think if you work in Gotham, it's difficult to come out from under the legacy of James Gordon. And I think that Maggie is a good enough character that she should. But I don't necessarily think that... And, and you and I um, had discussed what if she did something else besides being a police officer, blah, blah, blah... Um, before we started this podcast, because I had sort of pitched the idea of her as an Oracle type character to Batwoman. And the more I've thought about it, the more I don't think that's the right thing to do with her. The way we did with a character like Renee Montoya goes on to be the question, and that actually becomes her best thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I agree. And I don't think that's the right thing for Maggie. I think Maggie started out as a really important and iconic character because she represented an underrepresented uh, class of people. I, I can't think of a better word for it. Um And I think that her greatest strength is being visible and being Maggie Sawyer, being good at her job. And I think that she's probably best doing that in Metropolis. I really do, because Metropolis um, and the MCPD, to to an extent, is less defined than it is in Gotham. And there's less room for her to be overshadowed. And if I was to put her there, I would love to have her... I don't know if I would revisit the Toby Raines character, but I would love to have her maybe be like a media liaison or like have her be someone who works with the Daily Planet or the Daily Star. So you could fold her into some of the civilian problems that Clark and Lois are dealing with. But yeah, so I guess I think she should go to Metropolis, even though to me, she'll always be a Gotham City police. She'll be a Gotham girl. A Gothamite, yeah. So, all right. How about how about you? Answer us. Finally, people are screaming at their iPhones on the subway. They are screaming. Um, if you're screaming at your iPhone, please tweet us <laughs> at GHL Podcast. Please do. <laughs> tell, if, if you ever spooked somebody from listening to Geek History Lesson, uh, please tell us and spook somebody on the subway. Um, <laughs> Metropolis is known as the city of tomorrow. Mm. And I find it very appropriate that a homosexual character that is so trend setting like Maggie Sawyer 
comes up in Superman, mm. the man of tomorrow. It's the man the, for the better future. It's the city she belongs in. She belongs in Metropolis. She is a Superman character. And um, you were bringing up some things. I wanted to tell you, um, you want to know who, who went to Lois and Clark's wedding? Maggie Sawyer. Maggie Sawyer. <laughs> you want to know who went to Lois Lane's bachelorette party? Maggie Sawyer? Maggie Sawyer. Oh, I didn't I didn't know that her and Lois were that. Maggie and close. Lois are close friends. Hmm. They always have been. Where do you think Lois gets the scoops? It's from Maggie. Man, I don't know. Lois is too good for me. So <laughs> yeah, Maggie Maggie deserves to be in Metropolis. I like the idea. I understand why they took her to Gotham. Mm. Because when you're making Gotham Central, you're automatically like, oh hey, we have all these important cop characters. Well, let's put them over to Gotham. So I get it. Yeah. And I bet you Greg Rucker or Ed Brubaker was a big fan of the character, and that's the reason why they pulled her that over. That would be my assumption because um Greg Rucker puts her in two of his series. And he wrote the day shift with Maggie. Yes, so, he it, did. so then it's Greg Rucker. So that would be and and the bat he yep. pulled her in the bat. But well. I really think, especially in Superman Rebirth, we could, especially since we've gotten some focus back on Lois now, mm-hmm. um, and and Superman the book really seems to be a shared book now. Mm-hmm. It really seems to be like it's not all Superman's book. Uh, it's partly Lois's. I and love it's partly it. Though, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> um, that's the perfect place to bring back Maggie. Aww, because she is. She's I would one love of that. because yeah, it would be like yeah. But Maggie should be commissioner. Do you think she should work for the MCPD or would you put her on something like the science police? Well, the science police are sort of part of the MCU. Yeah, but they they sort of exist adjacent to that. There was a time where she was in charge of the science police. Mm-hmm. It was early 2000s, I think. Yeah. Or no, I can't remember. Uh, she, it I, must have been before she went to, she went to Gotham in 99. I want to say she was in charge of the science police like very briefly. I could be wrong for about like that. For like a minute, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I, 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 no, I think she needs to be top dog. Cool. She She is the commissioner mm-hmm. of the Metropolis PD. And then you know what I would do? Nope. I would do a story where Gordon comes to Metropolis to congratulate her. Oh, that's nice. Or to give kudos to her. And then, you know what? What? We do a storyline called World's Finest Finest. Uh, I Gordon get it. I love and it. Maggie. I love it. From the opposite cities. Yep. That's so great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice Superman Batman callback. Exactly. There you go. Uh, I have one final question sure. for you, discussion question. Uh, who should be Maggie Sawyer's girlfriend? Oh, God. Um, or do you think that she does? Because I really like, I think Maggie deserves nice things. Sure. Um, I would love to see her have a girlfriend in the comic book continuity. And uh, I don't. I don't know if it needs to be a new character, though. I think it does need to be a new character. Or, um, you know what? I'll give you two characters. Okay. Who should be Maggie Sawyer's uh, girlfriend and wife. Yes. Because if if I was writing the book, mm-hmm. um, I would build to Maggie Sawyer's wedding. Oh, that'd be amazing. And Lois is the uh, the maid of honor. And John's the ring bear. Uh, maybe. Depends on how well John knows them. But sure. <laughs> That's true. Sure. Uh, um, yeah. I would have two choices. Mm-hmm. My first choice would be Lucy Lane. Oh, I kind of love that. Um, but uh, in the 90s, Lucy got married to Ronald Troop, who we've talked yes. about in this podcast before. Mm-hmm. And Ronald Troop is another Superman character that I really love and I wish would brought, be brought back. So I'd rather put Lucy with Ronald again. That's fair. Um, because I feel like, to me, they're, they're the other Lois and Clark as Lucy. Mm-hmm. So if that's the case then I want to come up with another character who I think is missing from Superman lore, who has been in Superman lore for a long time, who, if you made her the girlfriend of Maggie Sawyer, would give this character purpose. It's also another character with a big connection to Lois Lane, which would also give Lois to be maid of honor. Uh, The cousin of Lois Lane, Chloe Sullivan. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. So now we can bring Chloe Sullivan fully into. She's been in Superman continuity before, mm-hmm. but as like a girlfriend of jo, uh, of uh, Jimmy's. Yeah. But she is Lois's cousin, mm-hmm. and I think she's such an important Superman character because of Smallville. I think she's a great character. So you know what? Yeah, bring her into Superman continuity, and and there's no reason why she she can't be gay. And she, or buy or whatever. She's yeah. Ma- and she becomes Maggie's wife. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I was surprised. Two in blondes. The, great. <laughs> <laughs> I could swap clothes. Um, yeah. I was surprised in the Supergirl book that we didn't have Alex and uh, Maggie dating. Oh. Because they introduced Alex Danvers mm-hmm. in the Supergirl comics. Mm-hmm. Well, I think it's because Maggie in that book is much older. 
She is. I think she's like uh, Maggie's in, oh, in her, or she's looking at. Oh, she's 40, forty-five. She's, she's middle aged. She she's forty-five, looking at fifty. Oh, really? You yes. think she's that old? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I'm so, I didn't mean to say that old for anyone who's like, I'm forty-five. I'm not that. I'm sorry. No, it's not old. <laughs> but if she's if she could easily be commissioner, which I believe, fair. She, she, she should be forty-five. She's got. She's been a cop for like at least fifteen years. Yeah, if not. 20 if not 20 yeah. probably 20 i don't know how long you, you know to be um, yeah so if sorry. she's if she's if she's looking at that career position mm-hmm. and she sort of stood in for jim gordon she's up that's, there you know what that's a really good point like if she's a if she's a gordon contemporary uh, well or close yeah she's got a yeah because yeah. i think of gordon as being like easily 50s G- gordon i think to me has always been like 51 yeah like gordon's like 51 but they've kind of de-aged gordon now because gordon used to they always keep putting more color in his hair always, and i'm yeah, like no <laughs> he used to always have gray hair yeah, yeah and yeah. now he has red hair mm-hmm. um so they've de-aged him they also de-aged alfred which i don't like as well uh i but, i will agree with you on but that. it's it's the idea to keep people young because I, I honestly think uh gordon should have a black mustache with gray hair you don't like the red I, do. I mean, I know the red is more of a modern affectation to tie it to Babs. Gordon is old. Your hair don't turn black when you'd get old. No, but I'm saying like, I don't know if a red mustache would look good with gray hair. Oh, that's fair. So that's why I give him a black mustache. Okay. I was like, why? You know. He's going to look like J. Jonah Jameson. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, I, just, I just don't know if a, if a ginger mustache will work. That's fair. Because he should fair. have gray hair. I mean, I, I love the whipped cream. But, I'm all about the but white. But yeah, Maggie Maggie is, I, I think she's easily 45. Great. I, and I like I like your suggestion of Chloe. I think yeah, that's very let's sweet. make her Chloe. And then, you know what? You know, DC Comics can hire Jason Knight any time to it, write this. It also complicates the relationship because it's an age difference. Mm-hmm. And then you have to work into that where Lois and Clark are like, well, I don't know. Like, Chloe's, cause Chloe is a contemporary of Clark. Yeah. So she'd be like maybe 10 years younger. Uh, she'd maybe be like 34, 35. Yeah. Yeah. So, th- so then you have that dramatic complication where like one, one you have the complication. You have Clark be weird about it and Lois be okay with it. Uh, I think you have it opposite. Oh, really? Yeah, I think because I think you make Lois the person. Oh, sure, because Clark's like I'm an alien, so like how much? Yeah, Clark, how much more different can yeah. we be? Clark's like, look, I have 17 livers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. Yeah, I can drink for days. <laughs> <laughs> nothing's weird to me. Um, but Lois, Lois, I don't think would be bothered by the homosexual aspect of it. I mm-hmm. think Lois would be bothered by. Lois had a girlfriend in college. Let's be real. Oh, <laughs> of course she did. <laughs> Several. Yeah. Okay. Lois, Lois dated an Atlantean. And they were all and they were all art school. Look, students. it's in my continuity that Clark's not the first alien. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god this will be such a good discussion episode the the romantic lives of Lois yeah. and I DZ can also hire us look, to write that story look, at any Lo- time. Lois has been around the block right okay <laughs> she knows what it's about she, she is a well traveled woman um, in, in, in many in, in every respect in every turn of that phrase um <laughs> no she she's bothered by it one because Maggie is her I would make she, Maggie's almost her best friend mm-hmm. um and and think about it. Of course, Maggie would be her best friend because Lois's dad was a general. Yeah, Maggie reminds her of her dad. Mm-hmm. Um, and then on the other side of it, it's her cousin who's younger. Yeah, um, who she has some maybe maternal feelings. Yeah, towards. and I yeah. think I think she's like, well, you're kind of robbing the cradle. I don't know. And then also she's going to because because Chloe's a softy. Mm-hmm. Chloe's an ultimate softy. Maggie. Is, Maggie's is a hard ass. Gruff nails, yeah. hard ass. So Lois is looking at it from both sides, being like, "You guys don't gel. You yeah. really don't gel." And I just think that that's what Lois would be bothered by. Lois wouldn't be bothered by the fact that they're dating. Lois would be bothered by, by the age difference and be like, "You guys don't match. Yeah. You guys don't match." Yeah, you know. And then Clark would be like, "Look, you know, my intestines go on for five miles. <laughs> so, and I have seventeen toes. We've Ew. never, <laughs> we've never seen his feet." That's because feet are disgusting. <laughs> are I just have? offended any of our listeners who are into feet. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, you know, um, I just think, God, like, it, see, see, again, it's, it's the same thing like what I was talking about with Ronald Tro- Troop with our, our Patreon Extra mm-hmm. episode and Jimmy Olsen. Like, Superman supporting cast is so good, and it's what makes that title so rich. And and they they deserve stories because yep. they're good. Yeah. Uh, so of all of the supporting cast in comic books, Superman supporting cast deserves its own title. And you could do that all in a Daily Planet title, which we talked about several times. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, or even a title just called Metropolis. Mm-hmm. You know, like they deserve it. Nice. So, sorry. That's fine. That any, was great. Any other Maggie Sawyer questions? No, that was all this my Maggie This has been a fun stories. episode, but I like Superman stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So let's uh, let's roll. World's finest, finest. I'm telling you. Hashtag world's finest, finest. I think a two issue arc. It's going to be great. Uh, drawn by uh, John Boy Myers. Gr- uh, totally. Ten out of ten. I'm in. Green light. <laughs> I'm DC Comics. You can write it. Uh, <laughs> shall we do my teaching tweet? Yes. Let's move into the final section of our podcast, the teaching tweet. It's the section of the podcast that you guys have been waiting the entire episode for. <laughs> we're in a less than 140 <laughs> characters because we're not going to the new character rule. I don't care who you are, Twitter. We're sticking with 140 characters because that's right. Ashley yes. will tell you. I'm really mad. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> Ashley will tell you everything you need to know about Maggie Sawyer. Maggie Sawyer. She's tough as nails and cute as a button and the DCU's finest officer. Oh, you put her above James Gordon? Well, he's a commissioner. He's not an officer. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I do have a qualm to call you out on your teaching tweet. Get out. You didn't give her her rank. She earned that rank, damn it. Well, if I make her a commissioner, then Gordon's going to be all sad. That's true. He would get sad. Though. Why is there a Maggie Sawyer action figure is what I want to know. You know, I was going to mention this earlier. <laughs> um I would die. There's no chance of it happening. I would die if DC Collectibles in their animated series line, because they just, oh, they just oh, did uh-huh, a Superman uh-huh, and a Lois, uh-huh. if they would do a Maggie and, and a Dan Turpin. Turpin. Oh, they should have. They should have. I would, you should have done you, it for Kirby's birthday. But I think you have to package it maybe with animated Dark Side. Great. I, I could see why you would want to do that. You can't that. do the two of them, yeah. You don't think you could do it with, uh, like, Jimmy or someone like that? No. Uh, the reason I put it with Darkseid is because Darkseid is basically who kills Dan Turpin. Oh, that's true, yeah. So you could so make it the Apocalypse Now pack You could make it the like Apocalypse that. Now pack, yeah. Oh, the, yeah. I would buy the You'd heck have, out of that. I would kill for that Maggie. Yeah, because there is no Maggie Sawyer action figure at all. If somebody wants to take one of the currently existing animated series uh, figures and paint it over as Maggie Sawyer, please hit me up and I will buy it from you. Thank you. You know, if you just took the the hair from the Dick Grayson one and put it on the uh, uh, the, the lowest, ta- I would say the Talia one or the lowest one. Oh you, you, yeah, Talia you, you, maybe. You'd get pretty close because she yeah, has, Maggie has it. short hairstyle. Yeah, she, she's got kind of a, got kind of a little mullet going on. No. Yeah. I like Maggie's Well, if it's hair. Dick, it is, because you got to cut it in the back, because he's got yeah. mullet. Right. He's got mullet All right. hair. Let's move on to the... <laughs> the <laughs> wow, we've done so so many divergent paths. What, what, who would have thought the Maggie Sawyer episode would be the one that would send us down so many different paths? I don't know, but it's been a blast. Uh, it's been a fun one. All right, let's go into the final section of our podcast, the Geek History Lesson Honor Roll, where if you go over to iTunes and write us a five-star review, we're going to read your review on the podcast. Ashley, who joins the Vaulted Club? of the honor roll today. The vaunted honor roll is joined by Craig C. Powell today who says reviews are entertaining and trustworthy two exclamation points and five stars. I have come to respect and trust the reviews that Jason and Ashley give via their YouTube channel for everything from TV shows to movies to comics. Combining that with the thoroughly researched content they put out each and every geek history lesson this is easily one of the best shows I have listened to in my 12 plus years of podcasting. I can't recommend this enough. If you are, like me, someone who wants to dive deep on a topic and go down the rabbit hole of fandom let ashley and jason be your guide a plus plus wow well craig c powell i give this review an a plus plus i give this review five stars there you go (laughs) (laughs) i see what you did there (laughs) yep um (laughs) thank you so much for your very kind and very erudite review yeah it was a great review Mm -hmm. craig thank you so much so if you want to be like him go over to itunes leave us a five-star review and we'll add you to the podcast you'll get part of the mind University on our roll. Also, go over there to subscribe to the podcast. You can do that on Spotify as well, SoundCloud, Stitcher. We're in all the places you can listen to podcasts. Also, Ashley, if they want to suggest a future episode like Lucy Lane, Ooh. Ronald Troop, who Ooh. there was a couple other ones, Dan Turpin. Dan Turpin. Where can yeah. they do that? They can do that at Facebook.com slash Geek History Lesson, geekhistorylesson.com, and on Twitter at GHL Podcast. There's a bunch of ways to contact us in all of those places. That is correct. And also, don't forget to go to patreon.com slash Jawin. You can listen to our Geek History Lesson Extra in episode only at that place on Patreon. Uh, this week, we're going to be talking about what, Ashley? Comic book cops. We're going to be talking about comic book cops. You know, the, uh, the, the Joes. The the dicks the the uh, unsung heroes of comic books the un, yeah the the <laughs> the, the gumshoes yeah that's uh, my favorite word the flat gum foots shoes. of yeah, uh, flat flat heels flat no I think it's flat foot I don't know the flat foots of the DC universe and you can only hear that by going over to patreon.com slash jawin helping supporting the show but you get an awesome awesome podcast yeah. that helps you do that you can follow me on Twitter at jawin j a w i i n you can follow Ashley on Twitter at Ashley V Robinson you can follow Geekish Lesson Podcast at G H L Podcast and you cannot follow Maggie Sawyer on Twitter because she thinks it's stupid okay. probably <laughs> that feels accurate to me <laughs> thank you so much for listening to Geekish Lesson 
us an I am Jason. I was trying to think of the uh, shipper name for. Sanders? No, the shipper name for, um, I forgot her name. Help me out. The, Chloe? For Chloe and Maggie. It's either Claggy or Zoe. It would be Mo- Moe? Moe. Moe? Moe. Or Ma- or. Wait, what's your name? Sullivan? Would it be Kaggy? I like Kaggy. Okay. I am Jason Kaggy Inman. <laughs> I am Ashley Victoria Robinson. <laughs> and Professor Ashley Victoria Robinson, will you please close out this fantastic podcast? Oh, well, class is now dismissed. <laughs>